Hello everybody, this is the Empirical Audio File and I'm here to talk to you about what I talked about in my last video about the LTEC Lansing Voice of the Theaters. This model is the Valencia model 846B circa 1975 and these are the speakers I modify and as you notice the big huge chamfer that is around that 15 inch of woofer and it was done on purpose so to act like a small horn but these horn speakers uh, are very dynamic and they're about 102 efficient and they're 32 inches high 26 and a half inches wide 19 inches long and with the modifications they weigh in at a good 250 pounds a piece. The first thing I had to replace, of course, is the covers. You can see tabs on the cover. That's so you can pull them off easily when you listen to music. Just grab the tab, pull the covers off. The old covers dry rotted. JBL, LTEC had foam covers. It was sculptured foam, and that pretty well dry rotted away. So most of these speakers may not come with the foam covers that originally came with the speakers because they did dry rot. So I replaced them with ordinary speaker covers. Next thing I had to do, of course, was work on the baffle. The baffle is a two inch thick baffle and I had to work on the horn, deadening up the horn. So after reading and listening to other people, the material I settled on was a Dynamat, Super Dynamat, otherwise known as a deadbeat. And this I got at an auto part where they do uh, sell auto uh, stereos and things like that. And it's mainly made for cars. But I used it to put all over the horn, sides, top, bottom, the lip there, I cut templates out so both horns would be exactly the same, and that worked out excellent for deadening up the horns. I can't, I can't, I, I highly recommend it that if you get a pair of these horns, I have a pair to do that. Inside the cap of the pr compression driver here, I put a big round piece, maybe three inches in diameter, inside the cap to help deaden that off. It's real easy. Undo the three screws there and you can put it in the interior of that particular cap. But the horn itself it needed to be deadened because it rings like a bell because it is metal, not plastic, but is welded together uh, aluminum. The baffle right here is something that I had to redesign. I had to make blueprints. I took them to a cabinet maker. He redid them. He put the veneer on front and back. Then after I got them back and he did a good job, I had to put a deadbeat all around them and the tubes, the vents, those are four inch in uh, vents that they have there. I put deadbeat around them and as you can see the speaker itself is very well made speaker and uh, it is a aluminum casting shroud that Altec made. When Altec first made these he, they used about a one inch plywood and they put off four bolts in. The speaker is capable of taking eight but for some reason, LTEC only used four, and the screws would come loose. So about once a year, you'd have to take the baffle off, tighten up the four bolts, and you could put it back. So when I redid the baffles, I found out that the speakers do and have the capability of taking eight. So I had them make it so it will take eight hardened, what they call button head screws with hardened washers and tighten those up to keep everything great looking. And as you can see, the port has the uh, 
the deadbeat on it. Now you can see very nice. The speaker looks brand new. These speakers look exactly brand new. Also, I had to put that chamfer on there. Big, huge chamfer. And what the idea of doing this big, huge chamfer, which you notice a lot of new speakers are doing that, putting big chamfers on the front of their speakers today. Well, this was done over 25 years ago. And I designed that so the chamfer would then act as a horn. So as the sound wave came out, it would just act like a horn and keep increasing them like a horn does to help that bass speaker. And that worked out real good by because it is a two inch baffle. That way you don't have a lip uh, that the sound has to go to and reflect off of. The crossover, this is the original crossover, never touched it. But what I did do is replace some of the wire with Kimber 4TC wire and put ferrite clamps on it. And here's the end where I put a ferrite clamp on the 4TC, took all terminations, and I used high grade of silver solder. Uh, this is solder I bought from uh, Music Direct in Chicago. And I silver soldered the ends together, and then I sanded them to actually make a pin. So I didn't have to put any pin connections on or anything like that. And of course you could see the ferrite clamp and it is before and after the wire and this is to help any RF frequencies to keep everything as clean as possible and I use a lot of ferrite clamps on all my wiring to help keep only what I want in the wiring without it picking up any RF. Uh, did that really help or not? I think it did. They use it on computers all the time and since I worked uh, with the military a lot of military stuff has caps on it, uh, ferrite caps to help keep things clean and uh, simple like that. The horn itself though I had to replace the foam. Usually there would be black foam. It's foam that was sprayed black and that rotted too. It got old. I took it and put new foam in and when I put the new foam in I didn't have time to spray paint it listen to the speakers, then I took the foam out, spray painted it black, just the way Altec did, put the foam back in, and I noticed, hey, these speakers sound bright. They sound a little edgy, but they didn't sound bright and edgy when I just had the foam in. Oh, it had to be because I spray painted the new foam. Took that foam out, recut it, got, uh, got the new foam. I covered the new foam in felt and then I put all that new foam back in covered in felt and believe it or not that really helped that edginess and brightness took it all away completely really made the horn sound great even made it better than what it was when it was brand new I see a lot of these they don't even have the uh, they have the horn in but they took out all the uh, foam around it put the foam back this is about a hundred pounds of shot and I'll show you what I did with this shot actually I added it to the bottom of the speaker to give the speaker even more weight to help stabilize these big speakers with even more weight than what they already are and that added another hundred pounds onto the speaker but it did help another thing I did was I took and I bought some Technosonic Vibration Absorbers. Uh, the Technosonic Vibration Absorbers are C12 and C10s. And as you can see also that the Kimber uh, silver cable there, as you notice, it has ferrite clamps onto the Kimber cable that go to the speaker. This is the help in case any RF is picked up, it's taken away. And the reason I put these Technosonics on is because this is MDF and this helps control any vibration from the speakers. So in order to get the speakers uh, even more stable, you'll see this big black thing. You probably were wondering what is that big black thing on that 15 inch driver? 
Well, that was specially made for me for a manufacturer who makes speakers out of this material. It's a resin material. And he makes his whole speakers out of this. And I asked him, would he make me some of these, uh, like you, like the legs you put on the bottom of your amp or preamp or something like that. And I said, would you make me some, uh, some real big ones? And he said, well, sure, I'll make them. And of course, I had to pay for them. But then after he made them, I got them back gave him to a tool and die maker. He faced them off nice and flat, drilled a 5 16th hole in it, countersunk them. It just so happens it has a 5 16th uh, threads in the back of that Anaco magnet. All I did was, you know, screw them down directly to the face. But since they're really nice and flat, that worked out perfect to put these and, and what, the, what it is, it, it's a resin, and it's designed just like you do your amps and stuff. They take the, the resonating frequencies out of that big driver and drive it into that resin, okay? Just like you use when you use your points and stuff like that, and they're made out of black resin. That's exactly the, th the theory behind how he made his speakers. So what they would not have any resonating frequencies. They would be completely dead. I guess there's all kinds of ways manufacturers try to do that by uh, um, using MDF and putting all kinds of braces and stuff in. But he used this resin to make his speakers out of. But adding that to the big woofer also helped tighten up the woofer. So the woofer is playing mid-range also. It's just not a woofer with a lot of bottom frequencies. If you look at your frequency range of all your instruments, that big, huge 15-inch woofer is playing also in the mid-range and then passing off to the horn, and the horn's taking some of that mid-range and going into your high frequencies also because it's only a two-way speaker. Uh, that was one thing that I was concerned about was tightening up the horn and so images would be super tight and tightening up of course the big huge bass speakers because uh, I didn't want any bass distortion okay so after doing all these modifications and spending all this money and hopefully I wouldn't have to buy new speakers how did it come out well Believe it or not, it came out excellent. It didn't come out very good. It just came out excellent. Uh, the bass tightened up. I mean, the, the, the bass and mid-range are tighter than the bull's ass in Mayfly season. It is tight. Uh, if you've never heard tight bass, and that's something you'll have to learn, you'll have to go probably to an audio salon and let them show you what some very expensive speakers sound like and their tight bass and then go home and play the same same exact piece of music they played and listen to your bass and see how tight it is or is it smeary is it is it uh you know is it boomy uh these are things you have to be shown because a lot of times uh especially for audiophiles like me all we could do is read and all you did was read something and then you went off of what the guy was projecting to you and you go listen to your system and say, oh yeah, I, I got that. Yeah, yeah, I, I got that. My, my bass is great. Until you actually hear it and are taught that this is what it's supposed to sound like, you'll be shocked to learn that your bass maybe is not that good. And another reason I wanted to modify these is because they're big speakers. They're going to present everything in real life, you know, sound and size. Uh, little five inch, six inch speakers will not do that. These big, huge LTEX, your big JBLs, your your bigger clips, you know, your your corner horn clips and stuff. They present things in real time, real size. And you're not going to get that off of 10-inch drivers or anything else. You, the only way to do it is, you know, it, it's, it's physics here. You need a lot of cabinet space for a big 15-inch woofer, woofer, which the LTEX are big enough for that big woofer because you don't need a cabinet for your horns. 
Horns don't need a cabinet, but woofers do. The bigger the woofer, the bigger the cabinetry has to be. That's why you see like your Klipsch corner horns are just so big. In order to get lower in the frequencies, they need a big, huge cabinet for the 15 inch woofer. These speakers go all the way down to 30. And I tested them. They're going down to 30 hertz at over 12 feet away from my sitting position. And they have very tight imaging, very good imaging. And if you get about 17 feet away from them, they completely disappear. Everything becomes so co coherent that you don't even see any of the speakers at all. In other words, you're not going to have a left and right speaker. It just homogenizes into one huge sound stage and that's another thing tightening up the bass tightening up your horn you have one big huge deep sound stage stage and that is to me excellent now it's not going to be as great as like an uh an avalon speaker or something like that that that's really made to have an unbelievable sound stage but what you avalons don't do well Let's say like they play a piano and the piano, I once listened to some Avalons and the piano sounded like it was 20 foot wide. Okay, these l will play a piano the size a piano is. Like you're standing right there or sitting right there listening to a piano. You can see every note being hit in space and they're not being hit on top of each other but you can actually see the keyboard and hear the keyboard of every note being hit if it's a good enough recording in space as though you are listening to live music. And since these speakers have been tightened up and as one musician had put it, he said, listening to your system is no different than going to a live nightclub in Chicago. And that's it. And I have to admit that you hear a trumpet, you hear a saxophone, you hear a clarinet, you hear a piano, you hear a bass fiddle. They all sound real size, real life. And that's what I like. I like to hear stuff that sounds real. I don't, I don't want to facsimile thereof that well maybe the saxophone you know you're getting no i want to hear a saxophone i want to hear the bite uh for those of you who live in a big city like if you in chicago a lot of people will play saxophones and stuff on the corner or if you ever hear a uh, violin uh my brother plays a, a clarinet uh if you ever hear these music live they're not quiet <laughs> instruments her loud instruments when you're up next to them you know uh, violin violin's a very loud instrument when it starts getting near you uh, louder than what you think even if it's unamplified but there are many 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 records or CDs I can play on these speakers and it will just sound like you're at a nightclub and I go to the Chicago nightclubs all the time and my next YouTube video will be on exactly what they sound like, what CDs that you can listen to, and then you can kind of compare what you have compared to what the l can do. Now, there was another thing also with these modified l the Chicago Audio Society. They, we, we did a little, little comparison test with these, and we compared them to $50,000 speakers. And uh, these were better than the $50,000 speakers. Well, what we did is we decided to go out and we went to uh, one of the Chicago salons that had that Tenoy's Westminster Royals. Those are like $50,000 speakers. And they had them all set up for us. They were very nice about it. Uh, you know, you guys want coffee, blah, blah, blah. They had them set up perfect. And they played them off the same equipment I have, the Conrad Johnson. I think they were playing off uh, the Conrad Johnson 8s, the Premier 8s. Those are the mono blocks. They also played them off of uh, Jeff Rowland amp, the Tenoys. So 
we listen to the Tanois. And these, the guys who were all there were guys who are very, very familiar with my system and these Altecs. And when we were done, I asked the guys, well, what do you think? You think these big, huge Westminster Royals, how would you compare them to my speakers? Or, you know, should I get rid of my speakers? Maybe even by these Westminsters. And, and everybody said, no. The Tanoi Westminster Royals do not even come close to what the Altex do. They're very good, but not, no, not for their price and not for as good as what your Altex sound like. So, so until next time, this is the Empirical Audiophile.